If you currently have an Azure App Service that you created to connect to your mobile applications, you probably have some code, some Node.js code that is using Azure Mobile Apps, the Azure Mobile Apps package. Now, to be able to use this package lately, in the past few weeks, you now have to have a newer version of Node.js hence a newer version of NPM. And of course, it turns out that by default, a very old version of Node.js, very old version of NPM is being used on the app service, which creates a bunch of problems. Now, in a previous video, I've already covered how you can update the Node.js and NPM version on your app service. So you can actually have, for example, version 12.18.0 and version 6.14.4 for Node.js and NPM, respectively. Now, in this video, I want to cover a, another thing because one thing is to update these versions and another thing is to actually make your code work because it turns out that if you update to these versions or newer versions of Node.js and NPM on your app service, suddenly your code, your builds are going to fail. So if I navigate over to my deployment section, to the deployment center, you're going to find that my latest commits over to my GitHub repository where I have my Node.js backend code are failing now because now I have a newer version in here and there are a couple of things that are not exactly working when using the Azure Mobile Apps package. So. Well, what we would have to do to make things work is navigate over to the development tools, go over to advanced tools and click here on go. This is going to open this Kudu Diagnostics console and you will be able to navigate over to debug console, click command or PowerShell. Perhaps this works on PowerShell as well. I'm pretty sure of that. And right here first of all navigate over to your site and your ww root folder here is where you have your code you're going to find your git ignore your app.js your server.js the package.json the package-log.json and the node modules of course somewhere in here we're going to have that azure mobile apps package that is creating a bunch of problems for us but for us to solve this, we just really need to do the exact same thing that the deployment center would normally do, but slightly, slightly different, so it actually works. Now, once you have uploaded your code, you may already see these node modules and these package-log.json files in here. We have to delete them. Uh, momentarily, of course, they are going to be regenerated as soon as we build this entire code again, but we have to delete them first. So what I will have to do in here is execute rm for remove, dash rf, and I am going to specify both the node modules folder and the package-log.json file. This may take a couple of minutes, perhaps, because the node modules folder is so, so big, with all of the packages that we may be using, but just give it a couple of minutes, these couple of, well, the folder and the file should be removed. So through the magic of video, there we go. Now that we don't see the file and the folder here anymore, what we need is to clear the cache. Cache? 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 We need to clear the cache. So we are going to have to run npm cache, cache, clean, and we're going to force this. So we're going to get some warnings like we should know what we're doing since we are forcing things in here, but we do know what we're doing. We are just cleaning the cache, cache in here. Now, once that we have cleaned it, we have to verify it. So I am going to run npm cache verify. And this should make things um, clean, cleaner, so things can start working again. <laughs> Let's just mo moving on. <laughs> what we have to do now is actually build the entire project again. So we have to run install npm. Now, 
For that, I actually prefer you navigate back to this URL right here. So you would navigate over to the name of your service, the name of your app service. So the one that you would have over here on your app service on Azure on the overview. This is string right here. This is the name of your service. So just copy it, paste it on a new tab and then write dot SEM dot Azure websites dot net forward slash API forward slash diagnostics forward slash runtime. In here, you're going to get this JSON, a list of all of the versions of Node.js that are supported for your app service. And somewhere around here, you're going to find the version of Node.js that you are supporting. In my case, that is 12.18.0. Here we have the version of NPM that comes with that version of Node.js. We are going to need it back here in the Diagnostics console because we're going to have to run npm i for install dash g very important npm but we need a specific version of npm to be installed preferably so i am simply going to paste that version of npm that is associated to the version of node.js that i have installed on my app service which is 6.14.4 so we will just execute this it should take a couple of minutes as well, but through the magic of video, this is done. Oh, and by the way, I forgot a very important step. Hold on, hold your horses because these may fail for you. This is one of the things that is failing due to Azure Mobile Apps. Thank you very much, Azure Mobile Apps. You would actually have to navigate back to your app service over to settings over to configuration and do something terrible, terrible, terrible. You, if you want Azure Mobile Apps to succeed here, would have to add this new application setting right here. Node underscore TLS underscore reject underscore unauthorized and set the value to zero. I know that these may cause, uh, this may expose your app service a little bit. Still, the peer-to-peer -peer communication will remain coded, will remain encrypted. But this does open the possibility of a man-in-the-middle attack. So beware, but it is absolutely necessary, at least when we install, when we build the entire project again, so Azure Mobile Apps don't cause uh, doesn't cause any problems. So just make sure that you add this application setting at least momentarily. Click on OK. You're going to have to click on Save and click on Continue so your app service is restarted. And that should mean that you can run npm ig npm blah 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 again and this should succeed. Otherwise the Azure Mobile Apps package is going to cause some problems. Of course, you will now see this warning here that the environment variable is set to zero and makes TLS connection and HTTPS request insecure, but we know that just we, we need it for Azure App Service momentarily at least. But now that we have this and that we have removed the, the, the node modules folder and the package-log.json file, we have to run npm install dash dash registry and here is another one of the problems that the Azure App Service the Azure Mobile Apps package is causing normally when the project is built over here from the deployment center all of this actually happens but normally what happens is that the registry uses HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash registry dot cmpmjs.org this don't don't click enter this is what is normally used but that would fail what we have to do is change this to just be r instead of registry so h https colon forward slash forward slash r dot cnpmjs dot org and that should succeed and that's it that is everything that normally the deployment center should do by itself 
but would fail because of that registry instead of r.cmpmjs.org. But that's it. This should make things work again. You should have your node modules again, your package-log.json in just a minute, I guess, and everything should start working. This would actually make your Azure mobile apps work again. For those of you in the past few weeks experiencing some 500 internal server errors, it was because of this. Because the Node.js version was too old, but then you had to update the Node.js version, which would break the build of your code, which means that you had to add that very very ugly setting that exposes your app service at least momentarily. By now you could delete it. Um, and then you had to build and install the registry with this new URL. But yeah, that's it. That's what was needed. See you in the next one, I guess.